Hello, it's Ruby, and today I am going to share how I am planning my time for the Easter holidays um, because, of course, it is deadline season, it's exam season, people have exams coming up, coursework due, um, I've got my dissertation due next month. The Easter holidays often do turn into time for studying. One thing I really do want to stress is that even though it is exam season, even though there is work to be done and um, I'm not, I'm not going to deny that there is a lot of work to be done during this time. That's not to say that studying should be the only thing we're doing and we need to make sure that we're also enjoying, appreciating other things. So in today's video, I'm going to be actively planning my time for Easter with you. It'll be like a plan with me, I guess. And hopefully this will help you plan your own time. I know that this is a week into Easter and so it's a little bit on the late side, but hopefully it will still be useful for the rest of exam season because exam season lasts for like another six weeks. So I am here on Notion. This is my Notion page. I'm very proud of my Notion setup. Um, and just in the academic section, I'm going to make a new page. I'll screen record and then you can see how I'm setting this page up. And I will also share this template. So there'll be a link down below if you want to use it too. The first thing is to do lists. So. I actually don't have any exams this year, which is the first year I haven't had any exams ever. Well, not ever, but since I was in year seven. So I didn't have any exams to prepare for. I've only got my dissertation, which is due on the 5th of May, and also my children's literature writing work, um, which is a 2,000 word essay and then a portfolio of a 4,500 word extract and a 500 word picture book. And all of that's due in the space of like 48 hours so it's a lot of words all due at once so I'm going to make separate to-do lists for the different submissions that I've got due so I've just colour coded that so that brown is my dissertation and then green is all of the stuff in my creative writing module then I just filled out that to-do list with all of the things I have to do I really love studying to classical music, like modern classical music, film soundtracks, etc. Um, and people like Alexis French and Ludovico, I can't say his name. You know the one I mean, I'll put his name on the screen. And so I just wanted to go through and update my study playlist because I haven't updated it for a while and I just keep on liking songs on Spotify as opposed to actually transferring them in. So I'm gonna quickly update that. All right, I've just updated my study playlist and I am going to embed this in to my page. So I haven't done this before. Let's see if this works. There we go. Okay, so I've added in the Spotify playlist and now I am just adding in reminders, admin tasks to do, which will just again be a to-do list and then things to remember because so often when I'm studying, I will think of something and I just want to quickly jot it down somewhere so I don't forget. I also actually always keep my master to-do list on my desk for that reason. Well, on the thing underneath my desk, just use this to jot down things as they come up while I'm studying. Then you can just go through that at the end of your study session as opposed to getting distracted. But it's also useful to have one on your laptop. I'm also adding a section for self-care with some break ideas. Things I want to do after exam season. And also my personal priorities. It's kind of a reminder of the things that are actually important. And finally, I'm going to put in um, my motivation. So these two final ones are basically journal tasks that you can keep on coming back to. You could write down why you're studying, why it's important that you study, what your motivation is. And I'm gonna keep mine very succinct and just make a note of some little bits. If I'm starting to get a bit demotivated, I can have a look at this and it will help me hopefully to put things into perspective a little bit. I'm gonna say spending time with family is very important. Not forgetting that it is spring. Remember to go outside. <laughs> Enjoying my study sessions. Studying for the right reasons. I want to explain this final one. Not studying just because you feel like you have to. Every single day as a student, you wake up in the morning and you decide whether you want to study, you decide whether you want to keep on going, and it feels like it's not a choice just because of things like deadlines and homework, etc. But it is technically still a choice. So every day, you're making this conscious choice to sit down and continue working, continue studying, continue working towards these goals. And I think having a sustained reason 
why you want to keep on studying, why it's important for you to study, is better than doing it on autopilot and also, speaking from my own experience, help you to keep on going even when it seems tough, it's stressful, um, it doesn't seem worth it, um, which is where those feelings of burnout come from. I used to think burnout was just, you didn't want to work anymore, but I read recently that burnout is characterised by not seeing that much improvement. So if you were working really hard but not seeing much improvement, that's when you're likely to burn out. Whereas if you were working really hard but you were seeing loads of improvement, then you're not likely to because it's the sustained motivation. It kind of goes back to, I quote this all the time, but um, success leads to motivation, leads to success, leads to more motivation. So if you're constantly succeeding, if you're seeing results, then hypothetically you shouldn't get burnt out. So my point is to, to avoid these feelings of burnout, what I try to do is be constantly reflective and aware of my reasons for studying and kind of aware of the fact that this is a choice and it's something I'm choosing to do. You know, so when asking yourself, why do I study? Why am I working? Why am I doing this work? Do you spend like, you know, half an hour sitting down thinking about what those things actually are? But I think one of the really important things, one of the things that has to be on that list is because you enjoy it and because you think it's important. If those things aren't on that list, then try and see how you can change the way that you're studying, change the way that you're approaching your studies, because, I mean, I, I, I do study quite a lot. I could not study to the extent that I do. I couldn't get the grades that I do if I didn't enjoy what I was doing. If when I sat down to study, I dreaded it. I really didn't want to do it. I hated the act of like sitting there and writing an essay. That would be so, so hard. Whereas if I sit down and I'm telling myself, wow, how incredible that you have the opportunity to spend three years of your life learning it, learning about English, like learning about literature, how incredible is that? At A level when I was studying chemistry, how amazing is it? You get to understand how the world around us works on a molecular level, like how you're able to see past this object of the mug, like the actual individual particles that make that up. That's so, so cool. I think getting yourself excited about it, reminding yourself that it's an incredible privilege to be able to learn, to be able to study, can help to improve motivation. So I'm going to write in here why I study. Number one, it's an incredible privilege to be able to learn. I love literature and literature is a way of helping us understand the world. I think be really aware of why what you're studying is important or um, why you think it's important. I like learning new things. These kind of become affirmations as well, positive affirmations in themselves, because when you read these, when you say these to yourself, kind of like convince us that these things are true. Also under break ideas, I write a few things like um, journaling, going on a walk, getting some tea. I've made a video of break ideas if you do want a few, but I think it's good to have those um, kind of cemented in. And actually, retrospectively, I'm gonna make two toggles. So under one will be general ideas. And then the other one is for specific ideas. So, so often when I'm studying, I'll think, oh, I really, really want to do this. Like, I really want to watch the Swan Lake Ballet on YouTube. That's something that happened quite recently. Like, I was studying and I was like, I really just want to watch Swan Lake. And so I wrote it down on my specific break ideas. So like, watch Swan Lake would go there. And then when you come to take a break, you can take a look at your specific ideas and do something on there. Um, the way that I do treat break breaks and the way that, you know, I speak about breaks, breaks a lot is I take breaks when I need to recharge, when my focus is lagging, when I can't concentrate as well. Um, that's when I'll take a break um, as opposed to structuring something in and taking it just for the sake of taking it. Um, I'm not saying don't do the fun things, but, but in my experience, it's better to have a study session and treat that whole thing as a study session with individual breaks in which will help your study session and then also have times where you're just like doing things for you and you can be totally switched off from that. Okay, so with the to-do list section, I'm also gonna add one down here. Non-academic. Make a note of some things that are important to you that you want to do over the Easter break. So for example, I really want to see the Titanic exhibition in London. And then finally, I'm just adding some snack ideas. It's good to have some ideas of quick study snacks that you can go to. Um, I've also got like, wait, I'll show you. <laughs> Excuse the fact that under my bed it is, it is quite packed under my bed as you can see. So basically in my room, I keep some very quick study snacks that I can just reach for if I need something quickly, if I'm hungry, then you don't end up having to think too much about it and you've just got something quickly on hand. So I've got three boxes of energy bars in here. These two were kindly sent to me from Misfits, so thank you. Bars, my favorites 
other white chocolates Becca leaves. These are so, so good. And then I've also got this box of Parkia bars. Parkia bars are my personal favorite. That's Parkia. They're just really good. They've got chocolate on the bottom too, which is nice. So I can easily just grab a bar if I want one. So I have a yearly planner and an academic planner and I use the calendar in my academic planner. This is what that looks like at the moment. This one is empty and I am going to tear this out and stick it above my desk. I honestly hate doing this, it feels so wrong. Um, but because I'm not using it in this one, I think it will look really nice above my desk anyway because I like the design of it. So. And now I'm just gonna fill it out with my internal deadlines for myself. I like to set internal deadlines for two reasons. Number one, it makes things feel a bit more manageable because I can look at my calendar and be like, okay, I'm definitely gonna get everything done by the deadline. But also having a deadline can spur you on to actually get the work done. And so I just find it helps keep me accountable and make sure that I actually keep up my pace of work. That is slightly scary to see, but, but there we go, that's all done. Next, I'm just going to clean my desk because it's a little bit cluttered at the moment and I really want it to be a good space for working. And that also means giving it a clean and a disinfect because I really like cleaning my desk often and having it properly clean because I just spend so much time there. What is this? So I've just come downstairs to get like disinfectant and Martha's filming a video too. It's probably will never be uploaded. So then there is one final thing I'm going to do, which is setting like a daily timetable. And I'm going to handwrite this one actually. I'm nearly at the end of this notebook as well. This is how I do overhead shots, by the way. This is very self-explanatory, but I was making this timetable. It's not very specific. I did keep it very broad. With studying, having routine makes it a lot easier to sit down and do it because there's no resistance. You just kind of know that you're supposed to be doing that thing. And then just to subsidize that, I'm going to set some timers on my phone. I'm setting one to go off at 12 to tell me to take a lunch break and another one at 1.45 to tell me to take a break from 1.45 to 4 because I just don't work very well at that time of day. So it doesn't make sense. And I know that I don't work well at this time. And if I tell myself to keep on working during into that time, it won't be productive. It will be a waste of time. And I'll end up just being more tired in the evening unnecessarily. So I am really trying to stick to not doing work between two and four really really trying to do that like really trying to do that so um yes anyway um sorry my camera ran out of charge which is why there's this sudden drop in quality but thank you so much for watching this video i hope you found it helpful good luck for revision for exams and preparation and coursework deadlines um we're so nearly there and i know that this period is stressful but just please 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 make sure to look after yourself um and remember that exams grades it's not the be all and end all like try to enjoy the process as best as you can because it will make it a lot more bearable and studying should be fun i think that's really important uh thank you for watching and i hope that you have a productive week